אליאתה ואודקה, אליאתה ואודקה, אליאתה ואודקה, אלוה ינוממך. הודו לאדוני כי טוב, כי לעולם חזו, הודו לאדוני כי טוב, כי לעולם חזו. Dear friends, we're sitting at the home of my friend Kentor Chazan Ephraim Sapir in Florida, vacationing and taking in the sun. But, in to my left is my dear friend Herbie Goldstein, who is a member of the Bet Tikva Choir and also of Lachan. We are now at the home of Ephraim Sapir, <coughs> reminiscing about uh, Shrul Glick. It so happens that this year is the 10th anniversary of the Yotzeit of Shrod Glick, who left us way before time. And so I decided to do a concert in his memory, April 22nd, at Holy Blossom Temple with the Bet Tikva Choir, which Herbie is a, a member, and with the Fahim Sapir, the Chazan Fahim Sapir, who will celebrate with us the Shabbat before the concert as well at Holy Blossom. Participating is also the Temple Choir and the Temple Singers and Lachan. It's going to be a very, very beautiful uh, event. Now, I took the opportunity to bring to you a couple of words from two people who were very, very close to Slowglik, who also was my mentor and my dear a friend and teacher. Um, first, because Herbie knows Swordlick from way back, tell us a little bit about your connection with Swordlick from the early days. I mean, as early as you can remember. As early as I can remember, I knew Swordlick when I was eight years old in a camp called Camp Futsa, which was just outside of Toronto, between Toronto and Buffalo. And Swordlick taught us singing at camp. That was my first encounter with him. Kenta Sapir, when did you uh, get to know uh, Sroglik? I got to know Sroglik in 1978 when I moved uh, with my family to Toronto. I was the Chazan of Bet David at that time. But I, the reputation of Sroglik was already uh, well known in the Cantor's Assembly and uh, in town. Uh, I even uh, hired Srul and the choir to do a Friday night service with me at Bet David Synagogue. My recollection with Srul Glick, which I didn't tell you both, was at the convention of the Candles Assembly, I think, in the mid-70s. When did they come Seven. the first time? That was 70. in 76. Here 76, I see right. and hear a rabbi by the name of Herbie Fader, who was a glorious camper before he became a rabbi, and coming with the beautiful choir to the convention, and this music is pouring out of the choir's mouths and faces and Shrul's body language, I was mesmerized. Since then, since the mid-70s, I was very close to Shrul and accompanied him many, many times uh, um, socially and professionally. We sang together, we conducted his uh, Haggadah suite and uh, uh, other composition. A temple, Holy Blossom, we sing much of his uh, music and of course Lachan has a great repertoire. And the concert is going to be purely his choral, cantorial, and orchestral gigantic works. Um, I, I want to go a little bit to um, Herbie, to you. Uh, describe as a member of the choir, could you speak loud? As a member of the choir, um, what was the uniqueness of his style, which is so different than any other Jewish uh, synagogue composer? One of the major uniquenesses of his style at the beginning was he wrote mostly for the choral. It was music written for the choir, not so much for the cantor, because Rabbi Feder was also a rabbi, of course, so uh, he was happy uh, for Sewell to write some of the choral works so that it would give him a little bit of a break, especially on high holidays. So that was the beginnings of Sewell's work. And also it really took us. Uh, it was very heartfelt and the way in which he conducted us uh, was very heartfelt. Everything was done so much from his heart and I for one learned a tremendous amount from him of how to sing with feeling. Of 
time, uh, you and I go back to the days of the convention where we heard great cantors and great choirs, and you became uh, <coughs> the Chazan at Bet Tikva in 1984. 1984. Um, as a Chazan working, not as a choir, uh, um, a choir member, but as a Chazan, what was the uniqueness of, uh, what was so special in your relationship in, with music, of course, uh, with Shul? I think that uh, <clears throat> if a professional <clears throat> will examine Sroll's works and analyze them, he will see very clearly that from 84 until I left Toronto in 2001, uh, there was a shift in Sroll's liturgical writing. He took much more care and paid much more attention to the Chazan as a soloist. And we had many, many collaborations on Nusach, on proper pronunciation, on enunciation, and phrasing, and phrasing of, of, of composition. And it's very apparent uh, in his works post-1984 when I joined this, uh, I would say, glorious uh, combination of a, a great congregation, a magnificent composer, and a magnificent choir. Now, Sroul, people were enamored with Sroul because he wrote out of the box at that time. He was an avant-garde in terms of the style of writing for the Sirga. First of all, it was the harmony that he wrote, which was not the conventional cantorial East European music, but in this rhythm. You both will tell me that I'm probably correct because his rhythm was always syncopated, not always, but very often syncopated and polyphonic, which means that one voice imitated another voice and was very, very unique. Now for the synagogue, he wrote basically for the choir, which was a good committed amateurs like we all have in our synagogues, but his real great works are, some works that we do at the, if we will do at a concert, is the Triumph of the Spirit, the Kaddish in memorial for Bernstein, Leonard Bernstein, and the uh, Singer to the Lord, a new song which is absolutely great. At Holy Blossom Temple we did a few times uh, the Haggadah Suite, which is for string quartet and choir, and it's absolutely beautiful. But there's another angle to this uh, Shabbat where uh, Kendall Chaim Sapir will be with us, and um, Friday night, there's also a connection between Shul Glick and Kalibach. So Friday night we'll do a beautiful kind of Kalibach Hasidic kind of passion um, uh, service. And um, because Shul Glick was the brother, is the brother of Elaine, um, who was Kalibach's wife. Kalibach, wife. wife. And uh, there's a direct connection be between Sul's music, in many cases, such as, very obviously, which is from the, from the Haggadah. So, we all are hoping that you'll join us for this great, great memorial concert, which is actually a celebration of Irving, Sul Irving Glick's music, which is also dear to our hearts and very unique in the world of music in general.